Good morning, everybody. Um, we are in Saturday of the second week in Easter. I've entitled today's text, Cafeteria Management. And our text is taken from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. I'd like you to please open your Bibles so that we can read this. But for those of you who are perhaps listening to this while you travel, uh, let me read it for you. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You brothers must settle from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with a spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. For um, many who read the Acts of the Apostles as one romanticized community of believers, Acts chapter 6 comes in as quite a rude shock. Not long ago in chapter 4, we were told rather emphatically that the believers were of one heart and soul, that no one claimed private ownership of any possession and that there was not one needy person among them. You'll remember this from the text in Acts chapter 4 verses 32 to 33. Now turn the page of the Bible and all of the above seems to have disappeared in oblivion. There is clearly a dispute in the community and a clue to this dispute lies in the opening lines of Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. The tiny group of ardent apostles had now begun increasing in number. The church was hit as all organizations are by organizational issues and the board of management was asked now to settle certain what I call cafeteria issues. So what were these cafeteria issues? The Bible mentions two groups of widows, the Hellenists and the Hebrews. In all probability, these two groups were Jews, but at some time in history, some of the Jews settled in neighboring countries that were influenced by the Greek language and the Greek culture. These people were known as the Hellenists. And since they lived outside of Jerusalem, were called also the Jews of the Diaspora. So was this just um, literally a kitchen squabble or was it an assertion of power by two groups in the early church? While we may never know the answer to this, we certainly know that management was forced to step in. They soon came in to realize that as a consequence of this action, their board meetings were neglected while they were forced to stand literally as some sort of kitchen supervisors to solve this problem. Now the apostles, recognizing the need to steer the organization with preaching and teaching of the word of God, began an efficient process of decentralization. They very cleverly chose seven men of good repute amongst them, of whom Stephen and Philip will be the only ones who find mention in the New Testament beyond the text of today, even though seven of them were mentioned by name. Today's, today appointments are inked, they are signed, they are sealed and delivered. Not so for the apostles who simply laid their hands on the seven chosen. They now had a ministry to care for, guided by no earthly human resource team, but guided by the Holy Spirit itself. Such is the beauty of the church that through the ages men have been ordained by a simple yet powerful 
power filled action known simply as what we now call the laying of hands. All bad things must come to an end as did this rather unfortunate incident. The openness of the community to resolve conflicts found approval and reward for as we are told the number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem. So what can we learn from all of this as we go through Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 7? That all organizations have what I would call and what we call teething problems. That doesn't make the organization bad. Many often people are critical of the church. They say, oh father, in the parish council, in this group, in that group, people are arguing, people are fighting. I guess the Acts of the Apostles put this, puts this first fight rather gently. Yeah? But these were two groups of widows who were quite mad at each other, mad enough to get all the men involved. So do we have organizational problems? Are there teething problems in any place? Yes. Will there be disagreements? Yes. Uh, remember that the church, as some people say, oh, the church is flawed. The church can never be flawed. The church is the mystical body of Christ and so it is perfect in every way. However, the human elements who work in that church, who offer their services in that church, are flawed. That doesn't make the church flawed. And therefore, while we will always have, my dear sisters and brothers, these uh, difficulties, these, these problems, these, uh, these, this inability sometimes to accept the views of one another, the church invites us to sit down, pray and figure out our differences. Uh, Morchas and screaming matches and calling people names and sending WhatsApp messages behind their back or behind whatever, that doesn't really go well for our churches these days. It only makes us a divided house. And we should always ask ourselves, have I become part of the problem? Or am I part of the solution? Am I creating the problem sometimes by allowing my ego to speak far louder? Look how beautifully the early church solved their problems. The other thing that you begin to realize is that the apostles were clear in their mind. They knew that their job was to preach the word of God, not to be bogged down by administrative problems, which very often I have confessed that 60% of my day goes into administration, there is accounts, there is income tax, there is you know, uh, maintenance of the house, so much to be done. And gradually we must learn to entrust this to our lay people and ask them to really take over so that we priests can do what God really called us to do, to minister to his people, to preach the good news. I want to thank you for being part of these daily reflections. And I want to invite you each day to this moment of prayer when we come before the Lord. So would you join me in prayer now? In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray, Lord Jesus, for all the intentions first that have come in since last night. For all those who ask for prayers. We lift them up to you, Lord. You know each one of them. You know their need. You know their struggle, you know their pain. In your precious name, I want to pray for them right now so that those hearing this message may find consolation, especially the sick, the aged, those who are disturbed, those who are worried, those who are stressed. Lord Jesus, fill your church with your Holy Spirit. Each little parish in our city, in every city of our country, all over the world, let our parishes be instruments of your love, where each one of us comes to serve and not to be served. That we do not come to assert our right, but we come to assert you, Lord Jesus, to proclaim you bring peace especially to those Catholic institutions that are going through a period of anxiety, difficulty, doubt, 
where members have been fighting with each other, arguing. Let us realize, Lord, that we bring a bad name to your church. Make me an instrument, Lord, therefore, of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Teach me in my own little way, whether in my parish community, in my area, in a larger body of the church that I serve, whatever may be my calling to serve, that I may always be a member of your mystical body that has contributed to love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Take away from me, Lord Ego, because it destroys our soul, it destroys our church, it destroys our community, it destroys our family, and we play into the hands of the evil one. Bless all our online viewers, Lord. Guide them, guard them, bless them. May this day, Lord, be filled with your presence, that in moments of worry, doubt, they turn to you, that they may seek your advice in everything they do, that they may call on your name in joyful moments and give you praise for the blessings that you will pour into their life today. We lift up to you our youth, our sick, the aged, and lift up to you, Lord, those with financial problems, those who have lost their job and who are still struggling, I lift up to you, Lord Jesus, those who are in hospitals, on ventilators, suffering from COVID. We continue to lift them up, Lord Jesus. We thank you for healing those who were sick and are now brought back to us safely. We lift up all these prayers and petitions in your loving name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget, as I tell you each day, to hit the like button, which is just below uh, the screen. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this message with all your friends via WhatsApp. In case you need to get to me, I'm available on WhatsApp. Uh, the number is 9820242151. If you're dialing from abroad, it's plus 91. That's the India code, plus 9198202-42151. Have a blessed day, everybody.